everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Thank you so much for joining me once again for Tea Time. Today, we're at the bottom, sadly, of some misty morning and focus, guys. It's so, so good. You have that bergamot in there, just that, just, it's crisp. It's so, so, so good. Well, this is the end of it. It's time to make another cup. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for being here with me. Welcome, welcome. It is midweek or just past midweek. We're on Thursday. I can't even believe it. The time just goes by. With this whole quarantine thing, it's just, I, I don't even know. And you don't even know what Monday is and Friday is and everything in between. It just all melds together. I don't know. Anyways, if you haven't picked up any of those teas, pick them up. You can go over to darkmoontees.com. You guys asked me for it. I made them for you. There's about five different ones that I've created. Pick them up, all organic. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I think you're gonna love them. Anyways, today is going to be a Sony day and we're gonna be talking about a patent that was just uncovered. And it is a fascinating patent at that. Why is that? Well. Little backstory, about, God, it's about five years now, maybe six years ago. I've been doing this for a long time. Before doing this show here on this channel, Jay Christina, I did Digital Photography Cafe with Trevor Current for about eight years. So we got about 350 videos that I've made right here on this channel and probably another 350, 400 videos with Trevor over the last decade. So I've been doing this for a long time, covering the industry and flying out to WPPI and Photo Plus Expo and all over the place in between covering photography, videography, and tech in general. So anyways, I remember in 2015, I talked about this camera that I thought was just awesome, it was revolutionary, and it was gonna change wedding photography as we know it. It kind of didn't, but it was pretty awesome. And that was the Lytro cameras. And why do I say that? Basically, it captures, instead of just light, that instant that hits the sensor, and that's it, it's 2D. Unlike the regular camera that you use and I use, the Lytro camera captured multiple instances of that light through little lenses that were inside the lens or inside the camera. Instead of capturing just the light hitting the sensor, it captured the intensity of the light, it captured the color of the light, and it captured the direction of the light. All important when creating a three-dimensional image. Well. Back in the day when this first company started, it was started by Ren NG, I believe it is. Let me pull up a wiki here. Maybe you guys can see that, hopefully. This is the wiki. So this is Lytro, and you can see him here. He is the founder. He is a Stanford PhD graduate, and during this time, he was photographing his daughter. His daughter was sometimes out of focus. She would move around a lot, it was like just why is this? Now, he did a lot of work with light field research, and he said, you know, how can I make something that will solve this problem? So if your daughter's running around all over the place, you can take a picture and it'll always be clear. So these Lytro cameras would be able to capture an image, and then later in post-production, after the fact, using software, you can dial in the depth of field, where the spot of focus is. So if you had, for example, matter of fact, I think they have one here. Let me go down here. There you go. You see this dog picture? There's a perfect example. It's one image, but in software, you can dial in either if you want the dog in focus, in front of the dog, behind the dog. All right, and like I said, how this works is there's many, many lenses that captures this information, this light information, the intensity of the light, the color of the light, and very importantly, the directional portion of the light, how the light is hitting. So what are the benefits here? Well, number one, just like I said, with his daughter running around, still being able to get a sharp image of her. So sports photography, big, big benefit. Why? Because you can get your focus right after the fact. If you have someone on the football field running top speed, and today we have cameras that shoot maybe 12, 14, even up to 20 frames per second, you're like motoring brrr, like that, that's great. You get maybe, let's call it 15 frames per second. With this camera, you'll get 100 frames per second. Why is that? Because it doesn't matter. You can dial in that focus after the fact. Very cool. Number two would be in low light situation. Why? 
Well, you can use a very fast piece of glass, maybe an F1.2, an F1, like the knocked lenses that Nikon was so crazy about talking about where you have a 1.0 f-stop lens, okay? Very fast glass. Well, you can use that with a camera like this or a system like this, why? Once again, with fast glass, your focal range is very, very small. It's like hair-like, right? An F1.0, how much is in focus? If I dialed in my eye right here, well, the tip of my nose would be blurry. Probably right about here would be blurry too. It's a tiny, tiny, thin razor amount of focus. Well, if you have a camera or a system that allows you to dial in that focus after the fact, then you can bracket. So the camera could basically dial in on, let's say the runner coming by, dial into the runner and then bracket him because it's getting directional light information, dial in and then bracket as he's coming through. And then later on, make it perfectly in focus just by pulling it to the exact spot that you need it to be. Very cool. And number three would be three-dimensional images or stereoscopic type of work. Yes, with a camera or a system like this, you can capture a 2D image, but like I said, you end up reducing the amount of resolution because there's a whole bunch of lenses that are in the works, okay? So a 40 megapixel camera, might only be able to give you a four megapixel 2D image with this type of system. And I believe four megapixels was the maximum before Lytro went defunct. I'll get into that in just a second. But anyways, it's called Plenoptic, Plenoptic camera recording or whatever. This does allow you to get that 2D image or a three dimensional image after the fact. Now, like I said, defunct. They ended up going defunct in about 2018, I think it was, and Google ended up buying them out for about $40 million, which was basically nothing. I mean, that's really cheap for this type of information. Now, how does this tie together with Sony? The information that we're hearing is Sony has partnered up with Light. Now, I guess Light or Light.io or Light.co, let me see, here we go. I'll bring up their website, now you can see it. Now, I don't know if this light company is the new company that stemmed off Google or if they bought the rights from Google or what, but anyways, this company and Sony has come together and Sony has patented a lens that will use this type of technology that has multiple tiny lenses within that lens, okay? That is a big deal, guys, that is a big deal. Now. One of the reasons why it's a big deal is because since it's going to be in the lens, the tech is going to be in the lens and not based in the camera. That means that they can use this lens on any of their full frame cameras, like let's say their A7 series or A9 or whatever. They can use this technology in there. That's all they need to do moving forward is write the software in the camera to interpolate the data that's coming into the camera when one of these special lenses are snapped onto the body. That's it, guys. Very, very simple. I call it simple. I'm not an engineer. I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But anyways, let's call it simple, guys. Very simple. But the key here is that Sony is moving forward with something very cool, in my personal opinion, that can change stuff. It would be revolutionary. It would be revolutionary because there is no current camera out there like a Sony, a Canon, a, an Olympus, a Panasonic, a Nikon that can do something like this. So it is major. This is definitely big. Now, was I wrong in the past when I said that this Lytro was gonna be like the next best thing to slice bread and I think wedding photographers would absolutely love it. Can you imagine? always being in focus and shooting in low light? The problem was at the time was megapixels and only being able to record up to let's say four megapixels when you actually take that 2D snap <sighs> proved to be problematic. And that's probably why they ended up not going anywhere with it. But now with the technology that we have and being able to have 100 megapixel sensors, unlike back in 2015, 2011, 2011, interesting time. 2011, can I just tell you, Mr. NG over there, Ren, ended up having a date with Steve Jobs over at the plant. This was 2011. And 
Steve Jobs and him was purported to talk about how they can incorporate this technology into the iPhone. This is 2011, guys, 2011. Now we've seen like the HTC One and whatnot doing something similar, doing a Lytro-esque type of technology where it uses multiple lenses to be able to get multiple depths of field and then you can dial it in after the fact. Very cool. But it's not the real technology that we're talking about here that Sony is actually going to adapt and put into this patented lens. Awesome, guys. Really, really awesome. This is major, absolutely major. So I'm going to bring up this patent real quick. And as you can see, it's 73 pages long. All right. I am not going to go through this. I know that some of you guys and gals out there have the time on their hands to be able to do it. I'm not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this link and I'm going to put it into my pinned comment as well as the description to this video. So you can take this link and then look at it, go through it, see where I'm right, see where I'm wrong and just kind of delve into it a little bit. I think it's fascinating. A lot of you guys out there that I know comment on this video <laughs> will be looking at this patent because you guys are a hell of a lot smarter than I am and you can look at this and really get an understanding for what is going on. So my question to you guys is what do you think about this light field photography, light field technology that will most likely be in a lens soon that comes out from Sony? What do you think about it? Do you think this will really up the game of Sony, really get something innovative, something amazing that other camera manufacturers are gonna have to look at this and say, you know, we might need to do the same thing. If Sony is doing it, we need to do it, all right? Sony's doing it, we need to do it. Normally we see Canon and Nikon constantly stepping up the ladder with technology and Sony was coming up from behind. Today Sony is really doing some amazing things and if this lens is in the Sony lineup I think things can change and possibly knock Canon down a rung and Sony come in number one. But we will see. It's just speculation obviously. I've been wrong in the past. I'm going to be wrong in the future but it's just a discussion that we can have. Now talking about camera sensors that we are, camera sensors today are getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier, especially when it comes to mirrorless cameras. Why? Because unlike only one camera from Canon and now Sony that actually flips down the shutter, the mechanical shutter, so that when you pull a lens off, that magnetism <laughs> <laughs> that is created by that electronic sensor doesn't just suck in all that dirt and debris. Well, most of the cameras do. So today we're finding that mirrorless cameras are just dirty on the inside. A ton of dirt, debris, dust and whatnot. And it's just the nature of the beast. When you pull that lens off, your sensor is exposed for the, all the time it takes you to snap on another lens. It's a problem. Well, that was one of the reasons why I developed these. This is the Aurora Camera Care cleaning system. Basically it's camera sensor as well as lens cleaning kits. Now what I did different is instead of taking one of these swabs that you see in a lot of kits and then using like a bunch of drops and you're counting how many drops of fluid, you don't know what kind of fluid they're using, are they using distilled water, are they using alcohol or something abrasive or who knows what and you're putting it on, you don't know how much to put on there, right? Well what I did is I created them like this. These are actually vacuum sealed in the factory and the wet one has the exact amount of cleaner on it and the dry one is just that dry. So you start out with the wet, you clean your sensor and then you go with the dry and take off any type of residue that's left. And these swabs come in full frame, APS-C size as well as micro four thirds. And I have them, this one actually is the full frame version. Okay, but like I said, there's three different versions. So if you guys need to clean your sensors, which I think that you should, and especially now that we're in quarantine and we're just hanging out doing nothing half the time, get all of your photography gear in order. Clean your sensors, clean your lenses, dial in your autofocus, get everything right. Okay, so if you wanna pick up any of these, pick them up over at my website, jchristina.com, or you can go to B&H Photo and Video or Amazon and pick these up. Anyways, I put these together about, I don't know, six months ago and eight months ago. 
They're being sold worldwide. And if you are overseas, you can pick them up over at Amazon. I do have them in the UK. They're sitting there, but they're not currently being sold because Amazon is having problems. So if you're overseas, just pick them up at my website or B&H or US-based Amazon. So anyways, guys, use promo code YT20 at checkout and you'll be able to get those for 20% off and 20% off anything that you put into your shopping cart, maybe some tea. <laughs> so that's the end of my shameless plug for my product. I hope you really enjoyed this information in regards to Sony and their new patented lens. I think it is absolutely fascinating. And I think you guys will probably think the same, Please, in the comment area below, put that information, put your thoughts down there. Let's have this conversation. And after this conversation is done here on YouTube, follow me over to our creative Discord server over at community.jchristina.com. Once again, it's community.jchristina.com. Let's have the conversation also over there. It's fully archived and searchable, unlike YouTube. And there's a lot of smart guys and gals just like you over there to have conversations with really great people. So I'll see you over there. And finally, download my ebook over at jchristina.com forward slash ebook. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. 10 tips of making sharper images. How to do it how to do it. 10 tips. Great for amateurs as well as professionals. Something in there for everyone. It's free. How can you beat that? It's free. <laughs> Once again, jchristina.com forward slash ebook. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.